you. Um, so I'm going to give the first presentation. On the EU, EU Common Agricultural Policy Reform, I'm not going to bore you with the details of this reform, which is quite uh, technical. I think what's interesting is that the EU and the US have taken, uh, uh, over the last few years, a very, very different path and diverging path. And uh, uh, this is what we will uh, discuss, I guess, uh, uh, the most interesting part of this, uh, of this session, and how this diverging path uh, uh, will could make uh, potentially uh, a trade agreement on agriculture uh, quite uh, difficult. So I'm just going to give you a quick uh, overview of the of the EU reform. For those who uh, is uh, oh, no no it's not the uh, how does that work? Yeah okay. So uh, this reform was passed at the very end of 2013, but there are many uh, uh, aspects that member states have to define themselves and submit to the Commission before uh, next month, August, so we can talk about the 2014 reform. Uh, for those who are not familiar with the EU until uh, uh, the EU policy, uh, until uh, the early uh, 90s, uh, we had a very, very interventionist uh, farm policy with the prices uh, set administratively, in many cases quantities set administratively. And over the last 20 years, the, there's been a consistent set of uh, reform where uh, more or less uh, the, the EU uh, went away from uh, uh, market management, and, uh, but in exchange gave farmers uh, huge amounts of direct payments. And little by little, these, uh, these reform, the re different reforms uh, uh, made it uh, such that uh, these payments became more and more decoupled, not fully decoupled, but almost close to, to rather close to a, a lump sum transfers to, to, farmer now, to farmers now. And this uh, 2014 reform was quite interesting because uh, many uh, groups, interest groups, wanted to go back, to go back to the old time, to go back with more counter-cyclical payments, more market intervention. And one of the interesting points is that the farm lobbies, especially the French farm lobby, said, look at what the US is doing. We want the same. Uh, so it was potentially dangerous, but so far the institutional uh, setup was such that the commission, uh, the commission, which has no decision power formally, but which has the, 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 the monopoly of, uh, put, of tabling a, a, a proposal, has resisted a lot to these uh, demands. Uh, so, um, more or less, this reform is often seen as quite disappointing because it didn't change much. But uh, it may be seen as a good thing because at least we resisted, the Commission resisted uh, the pressures to go back to price support, to uh, coupled payments, to uh, more or less insurance, and to all the bad ideas, some of them were being inspired by the US Farm Bill. Uh, so, uh, it's uh, the, the main issues that's in terms of market management. Not much, not much has changed. There was a, a, a further step towards uh, uh, liberalization of market. With uh, the, the big issue is the end of the sugar quotas. So far, we have had quotas and uh, high guaranteed price, production quotas and high high guaranteed prices. And uh, the Commission managed to have it this dismantled by uh, 2017. The dairy quotas will also be dismantled, but that was decided before this reform. And about the same thing for wine. And it was more or less the, the last uh, areas where there was some market intervention. So now there's no serious market management. It's mostly decoupled payments. Uh, there are still some... Uh, the Commission had a, a, to, 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 uh, to, to please, the, of course, the, the member states uh, who uh, say that uh, these direct payments, these fixed direct payments, were unable to cope with a, a different crisis. So uh, they set up a, a budget, a separate budget, to deal with crisis, but in a rather market-oriented way. That means that when if prices go down very quickly, there will be a, a support for uh, private storage or things that are not too interventions. Uh, the Commission also had to give up on some issues in terms of uh, uh, strengthening the bargaining power of uh, farmers. This was mostly a French demand, saying that the, the farmers were crushed by big supermarket oligopolies. So there will be, we don't know exactly all the details so far, but some exceptions to the uh, competition policy for producer groups. Uh, and also, uh, the Commission was not really uh, favorable to uh, setting up some insurance programs 
but they also had to uh, to 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 please some of the member states and there will be some uh, some uh, risk management tools uh, in terms of uh, we can go back to this uh, later in terms of possible uh, public support to some uh, insurance program but they made it uh, uh, it's, uh, they did it in such a way that it will b have to be uh, co-financed by member state, and it's clearly a way to make sure that this will not going to go too far because uh, member states are absolutely broke. So uh, their last issue is that there is some recoupling of some of the direct payments, but that should be relatively limited. It's mostly for uh, grazing beef because uh, there is like a what we call a serialization of Europe. Uh, the livestock sector is going down and the, all the grazing land is uh, converted to corn. And uh, this is also for environmental reasons. To, we want to maintain some, grass, some grassland. And also there is a, some bizarre uh, obsession by some uh, member states that uh, we are too dependent on imports for proteins, soybean in particular. So there will be, there has been some demands to support more directly some uh, traditional protein seeds, uh, but that should, not, that should remain relatively limited. On the direct payment, which is now the, the big budget, I mean the, the big amount of money of, of the cap, uh, there has been more reform in terms that the, the entire architecture of these payments has changed. It has changed because uh, the Commission has proposed to uh, take part of this payment and to turn it into a green payment that you would get only if you do some positive environmental action. At this, time, at this stage, the, the, the negotiations lasted for two years because farmers hated the idea that we cut this payment and this budget and we only give them this payment in exchange of uh, environmental uh, actions. Uh, and uh, the initial proposal of the Commission has been uh, very, very watered down in terms of greening of this payment. But still, there is no uh, formal uh, compulsory across all member states uh, obligation to, to, to have uh, some uh, environmental conditions to get some of the direct payments. So this new architecture, now we have a base payment, which is a bit like the old payment, except that it's a lower amount of money. You don't have to do much to, 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 to get it. And it's going to be a per hectare payment in every member state. So far, it's, some of them have kept individual references. There is another layer, which is uh, this green payments. And there are extra payments for young farmers and for less favor, favored areas. So. Uh, this greening of the cap has been really the most controversial um, issue in the entire negotiation. Because the Commission proposal was rather ambitious. It was to, uh, to, to have a big chunk of these direct payments conditioned to uh, several things, like the maintaining the, the natural grassland, which, uh, as I say, is being converted to, to cereals. Uh, it was also uh, to uh, have a, what, what is called an ecological focus area. And this was the most controversial issue. Uh, the reason is that biodiversity, all indicators show that in Europe, biodiversity is decreasing in an extremely dramatic way. We're talking about minus 60% of butterflies in 20 years. I mean, this is big, big. And all the bird population, all, all the, the all the taxons that we, we follow, that ecologists follow, show pretty much the same thing. So the commission wanted to have farmers to, to, to set, not completely set aside, you could, go, you could uh, grow some uh, traditional crops, but to have areas that are really uh, grown in a way or not grown in a way to protect biodiversity. And of course, the farm lobby uh, said that uh, it's crazy at this time where we, we have to feed the world to, to have this kind of negative productivity shock. And the overall, I mean, you can go back in the discussion to the details that are very technical, but this constraint has been extremely watered down. But what has not been watered down is the possibility for a member state to, uh, to adopt extremely uh, tough constraints on this area. And we'll see that some member states will do it. Some of us will, will not. Uh, other than that, uh, the main change is that a simplified scheme for small farmers. Uh, that's the fact that uh, some of the current beneficiary of the payments, like uh, golfs and uh, hospitals that have some kind of farm somewhere, will be uh, taken out of the schemes. 
But the main issue is that the, there will be a considerable flexibility left to member states in, uh, in implementing this uh, general regulation. And this is pretty much something that, uh, that is uh, not avoidable because now with 28 member states, extremely different. In uh, Romania, you have uh, four, hectare, four acres farms in general. In, uh, in Slovakia, that's huge farms uh, from the communist era. So it's very difficult to maintain a single common agricultural policy. So um, the main issues in comparison with the farm bill, uh, first, Europe will still give a lot of money to farmers. The budgets have hardly been cut but they are decoupled direct payments. And again, the, the Commission has been kind of the, the gatekeeper in this area, uh, not recoupled payments, or very few recoupled payments, not, no market uh, intervention, no price support, and so on. Uh, so overall, there should be, unless there is a drastic reform of the Green Box, little impact on WTO commitments. Uh, the only exception is perhaps the in new insurance programs. We don't know how big this is going to be. This is really, this will be left to member states uh, because they will have to co-finance it. Everybody believes that this will not go very, very far in terms of public expenditure, but that's, that's still something that is a, a spillover of the US farm bill in, uh, in Europe. So just to show you, this is a rather consistent path of uh, reform that we have more and more direct payments and less and less other market interventions. Why, by comparison, the, if you look at the U.S., you have the first uh, less uh, stable budget, but also different uh, policies that... Uh, so we can perhaps discuss the TTIP issue later. So in conclusions, uh, not many changes on market management. It's still the, the consistent with the historical orientation that we, we get away from market management, perhaps fixed decoupled payments. And the Commission resisted most of the demands for recoupling, contrastical payment, all kinds of uh, large-scale assurance programs. Thank you.